Hey, Weather Warriors, a massive coronal mass ejection has just launched off the left side of the sun here due to a large solar flare blooming. And this is actually headed right towards Earth and could set the stage for a severe G4 geomagnetic storm over the next 24 to 48 hours. I'm going to go over the impacts in Aurora forecast where you could potentially see the northern lights. And here's another satellite image of this flare really brewing on the sun here. And you can see that explosion coming right off the sun. This is due to an M, about an M.282 class flare. This is almost an X class, which is severe. Now we had an X class last year, a couple of times with some of those Aurora events, which I'll show you in a second. This is the Aurora oval. This is where the Aurora is viewable. Now you can usually see it if you're just south of it, looking north as well. This is kind of the auroral arc, and you can see it's well into Canada right now, but look what's going to change over the next 24 to 48 hours. This is the forecast from the SWPC. This is tomorrow night's aurora. This is Sunday night, and this is tonight's. I mean, there's even a chance tonight we could see them. More likely tomorrow, uh, early evening. You can see this red line here. This is the viewing line. This could extend all the way down into Nebraska, Iowa, potentially the central U.S., into the northwestern and northeastern United States. With these storms, you know, briefly, you could see it even move farther south into like Kansas, Oklahoma. Sometimes we do see that for a very brief period. And uh, this is pretty unprecedented. But like I said, with these solar flares and uh, the top of the solar cycle, sometimes you get auroras all the way down into the central United States. Last fall, I think we even had a report down in Texas and Mexico. It doesn't look to be quite that bad, so I don't think you're going to see mass power outages with this particular flare or, or auroras all the way down to Mexico, but we definitely could see auroras all the way down to the central United States and for sure up here in the red. There is a wild card factor and a potential smoke storm coming, and I'll show you that in a second. So the KP forecast is going to be around a 7, maybe up to an 8. Again, that's going to be in that zone right there, so you can... Look at those Aurora apps. There's some Aurora apps that give you the KP index. This was uh, last fall. You can see this is something I captured out in the central and mid-latitudes during a K KP 7 and 8. So you can definitely see these auroras in the central U.S. Uh, with these types of events. There is a wild card factor here. We've got a smoke storm brewing up in Canada. This is right now. As we head towards overnight here, Saturday into Sunday, this is uh, Sunday around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You can see the smoke plume, 150 there, um, and, and pretty dense. 150, you typically see the sun as like a ball. There's not much, uh, there's not much uh, scattering taking, or there's a lot of scattering take place, so you don't really see the bright uh, flares coming around the sun. And so you just see this singular ball, orange ball. And uh, that's going to really impact Aurora viewing tonight and tomorrow night. Now watch as I fast forward this uh, towards tomorrow night. This is around, let's go like 10 p.m. or so. You can see the smoke is really heavy here in the central U.S. out into the southeastern United States. Really anywhere in that yellow area, it's going to be really hard to see the Aurora. So... While you are in the northern latitudes up here and could see it, the smoke is really going to shut that show down for those areas. Now, these areas do not have smoke in the northeastern United States and the northwestern United States. However, there's a wild card factor for that as well. These are the clouds. So this is the low, mid, and high level clouds. And if we fast forward this to uh, right, right around now, Tonight, it's going to be pretty clear for most of the northern United States and central United States. Tomorrow, a little bit of a different story around 1 a.m. tomorrow night. You can see, of course, right where the smoke's at, it's actually clear, but there's going to be smoke there, so it's going to be kind of harder to see. It did show uh, less smoke out west, but there's going to be a lot of clouds here in Montana, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, Nevada, so probably not as much there. But you could see, potentially see the aurora up there in Oregon, parts of northern Idaho, northwestern Montana, and Washington. And uh, as we go through the evening here, overnight, maybe clouds clear just enough for northern parts of New, uh, New York into southeastern Canada, maybe maybe even Michigan. 
uh, although there might be some smoke there. You could also see the aurora there. Everywhere else, again, there's going to be clouds and smoke. Uh, so it's actually kind of a kind of a tricky night to view the aurora. I don't think you're going to see widespread reports tomorrow due to all that smoke and clouds. But some areas where there's no clouds and no smoke around peak time tomorrow night, you, you could see the aurora pretty intensely way up in the northern United States. Now, that's just one storm. We could theoretically see several more storms here over the next few years. We're at this uh, zone right here, 2025. These solar cycles peak every 11 years where they dip, they get really little sunspot activity, solar flares, and then they really spike. And we're right on the maximum right now. So we could be seeing some more of these events over the next few years. And it really will start to taper off after 2028 before we start a new whole, whole new cycle there. So more events will probably be coming. This website's a great website uh, to view these auroras. And I'm going to show you what to look for here. This is spacew.com slash plots.php. The thing that you want to look for is when this BZ field here, down here in this graph, once that starts to go like below negative 10 or so, right now it's kind of hovering around zero, up and down. This graph will go way down negative 10, 20, 30, sometimes 40. When you see those types of values, when this red nose dives like that, it typically means the aurora is getting pulled down really far south into the atmosphere. And when I saw these auroras last year, it was around a negative 20 or so, and this was kind of in the central portions of the United States. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to watch for. You'll see this velocity scream up. It's actually pretty high right now, but up into that 750 plus range. Uh, the solar wind density as well. And this is that that flare I was talking about right there. So these are kind of cool charts to keep your eyes on. This is the current aurora activity that they'll show. And so if you see that start to scoot down in the central United States, you'll know the aurora is there. And the KP index, like I said, there's a KP map. You can search for it in Google. Uh, this shows where whatever the KP is, this is kind of where the aurora is visible from. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty reliable. You can be a little bit south of that line and still see it. Uh, so right now it says the KP is like a four or so, which would put the uh, viewing area somewhere kind of in this area. So if you see that thing spike up to seven, eight plus, you'll start to see that in the central uh, parts of the United States. So this is another thing to keep your eye on as well. So just thought I'd make that video uh, for people watching the Aurora tomorrow night. Again, I don't think there'll be anything like catastrophic anything like that with these uh, solar uh, storms but like I said we'll keep our eyes to the sky uh, and watch the aurora so hope you enjoyed this video got a new video coming up regarding a massive dust storm coming as well soon uh, enjoy this video and we'll see you soon